Secret time. You know what time it is, those of you that are audio listeners. It's secret time. And you know what? I am going to launch off right away. First of all, uh, you know, in the editing process um, of, of, of last week's show, listening back, I realized, you know, I misspoke a couple times. Um, you know, I, I'm talking about that whole instance with, uh, with gun shop guys. God. Um, not the show. The show was a great idea. The reason it ended was just so fucking stupid. Um, but I realized it, where I mentioned that Harry, you know, I make this fucking, I make this, this little video post on the gun shop guys, Facebook page, which that it actually is still there. You can't, you can't like look in your podcast player and find gun shop guys that is gone. But every episode of gun shop guys that was, uh, posted live is either, it's either on the McPherson Firearms web uh, Facebook page or it's on the Gun Shop Guys Facebook page. And the Gun Shop Guys Facebook page, the last video posted was of me doing this like little fucking very, very, very fair goodbye. You know, not even a goodbye. It was just a, hey, where have we been type of thing. Um, and it was right after that that Harry fucking, you know, first of all, Harry, he either commented or messaged me. I can't remember which one. I want to say he messaged me. After I posted that, and he was like, let's be honest, uh, Gun Shop Guys wasn't good after I left, which was fucking, that wasn't true. Uh, if anything, the show got better. Not by much, but it got better. Um, but he fucking sends me this message saying, hey, you know, gun, uh, you know, uh, you know, Gun Shop Guys hasn't been good since I left and whatever. And then like a couple days later, he's like... Oh, uh, you know, I, I talked to Vinny about it, and we, we, you know, Vinny was like, you know, we, uh, me and Vinny were talking about it, and I said that we should do like a goodbye episode, like just me, you, and him. We should sit down and talk, just the three of us, and uh, you know, try. To, I mean, it, it was weird the way the two of them wanted to force out Stan. Uh, maybe Harry didn't all along want to force out Stan, but he did want like this final episode to be sans Stan. Um, Vinny, on the other hand, did want to force out Stan. I don't know why. I'll get to that in a minute, um, but he, uh, but but Harry sends you know this message saying, oh you know I want to do this goodbye episode, and in last week's episode of this show, I had said that I wanted Vinny to apologize for you know being unprofessional or whatever. That is wrong. I never, I I actually, you know, listening to the editing, I was like that doesn't make any sense because I wouldn't do that, <clears throat> and I didn't do that. I never fucking demanded an apology or any bullshit like that I never ever ever would have done that I never would have done what I said was that's fine I don't mind doing that being you know doing some sort of goodbye episode I said I don't mind doing that um but uh but I have to hear that from Vinny you know I need Vinny to call me or whatever and um and let me know, you know, text me, probably text, I mean, I don't fucking answer the phone, if my mother called me from the grave, I probably wouldn't answer the phone, but I was like, I, you know, you want to do some sort of goodbye episode, you want to do some sort of little thing, you know, the three of us sit down and shoot it, you know, shoot the shit or whatever, that's fine, we can do that, um, but, uh, but I need to hear it from Vinny, I need Vinny to be the one to fucking text me, and be like, you know, hey, I want to do this thing, you know, I want to fucking, I don't know, fuck, I, I don't know, I don't even need them to say, I want to see you, fucking, if he'd have just said, like, hey man, you know, Harry wants to put together this episode, I'd have been down, I'd have fucking done it, but no, you know, and this went back and forth between me and Harry, and uh, that was what it was, it wasn't fucking me asking for any sort of apology, fucking Harry keeps saying this shit, you know, I want to fucking do this thing, and I kept saying, you know, that's fine, I want to hear it from Vinny, let me hear it from Vinny, if you, if you guys want to do this, then fine, let me hear it from Vinny, though. And then it wasn't until, you know, whatever, six months later, when Harry says, uh, you know, I want, uh, you know, me and Vinny want to want to bring back gun shop guys, the two of us, and whoever else they bring on. We want to bring it back, and can we have control of the, the thing back? And, uh, you know, unbeknownst to them, I had already canceled the show. Um, but I had said, like, yeah, sure, why don't you tell Vinny to fucking text me and ask me. And, and then maybe, and, uh, and the response that I got was Vinny said, you can suck his dick. So, <laughs> I mean, you want to talk about fucking ridiculous. I mean, you can listen to last week's episode, secret time. Um, that first 17, 18 minutes is me going on about, about what happened with gun shop guys. 
and uh, and you make your own decision on uh, on who you think was in the right or in the wrong or or if it all fell in between or whatever. But the other thing was Stan. What was weird was in November of 2020, October I think actually October of 2020, Stan gets hired by the post office, and uh, I will admit he didn't exactly handle. <laughs> he was working for. Vinny's gun shop at the at the time, McPherson Firearms. He was working at Vinny's gun shop at the time, and he got hired. and uh, And he probably had two or three weeks' notice that he got hired. And rather than you know tell Vinny, hey, I'm, you know I got a new job, I'm leaving, he waited until basically the last day, like a day or two before, uh, to tell Vinny that he got a new job. And uh, and it was two days later, two fucking days after that. Vinny sends me a text message and says, hey, can we, can you and I meet just the two of us on Sunday afternoon? And I said, yeah, sure. And I had a general idea of what it was going to be. Uh, you know, me and Vinny hadn't talked. He didn't know that I already knew that Stan had left and was going to, you know, be working someplace else. He didn't know that I already knew that. So I go in and I sit down with Vinny and he has, you know, he launches right into this like, well, Stan got a new job and I don't like how he left and whatever and I want him off the show. That was his fucking answer to this. This kid, Stan, goes out, gets a better paying job with better benefits with all this shit and Stan, uh, uh, Vinny's response is that he wants to kick him off the show. And I, and I said, no, absolutely not. I said, no, Stan is part of Gun Shop, guys. He's part of the show. We're not kicking him off just because, you know, he fucking found a new job. Um... So, uh, so anyways, um, yeah, that was, that was just my little molten, you know, ending, ending rant, I guess about, uh, about that. Um, so with that, there's secret time for this week and now I'm going to go ahead and launch into this show. Let's see here. Oh, you're not scheduled to go until 10 15, but I'm going to go right fucking now because I do what I want. Facebook and StreamYard. Welcome to adulting with Donnie. Um, Happy Friday. This is Friday night that I'm recording this. Uh, I meant to do it yesterday, and then I got fucking just... Yesterday was my day off from work. I was hoping to have a really great day off from work. Um, just a nice, relaxing day for off from work. And my watch, my, my awesome watch that my mate got me for my birthday last year. Um, the watch, it, it measures... Um, uh, it has like a stress meter on it. Um... So it, it it measures my heart rate. That was the biggest reason I wanted a watch at all. I tried two or three or four watches before she got me this one. This is I've been through it many, many, many times, but I'm gonna go through it again. This is a uh, a Samsung Galaxy um, watch, and uh, and I love it. And and it's way better than the ones that I tried. The ones that I tried were like anywhere between ranging between like twenty and sixty dollars. I think the most expensive one that I got was sixty bucks. Um, the $20 one was absolute garbage and, and I don't think that it like accurately measured my heart rate or anything, which is what I really wanted. I want something just to measure my heart rate because it was when I first started going to the gym last June, I talked to a, to this guy, my, a friend of mine who used to be a bodybuilder and he talked to me about some heart rate stuff and target heart rates and stuff. So, um, you know, trying to burn fat and keeping your heart rate at a certain point throughout the day and whatever. So. I wanted a, I wanted something to measure my heart rate, so uh, I tried a couple different ones. Uh, I didn't I, you know, honestly, the last one that I got, I kind it was okay at best. It was okay um, for a, whatever whatever that one was. It was like I want to say it was fifty or sixty bucks. Um, whatever that one was, that one for what it did for what I needed it for, it was fine. This one that she got me though, this thing is fucking crazy and awesome. Um, you know, I get text messages, obviously I get the time, the date, all that shit, but like I can get my calendar, every notification that comes across my phone, I can set up to come across my watch. I don't have it that way right now. It's only set up to get, um, phone calls, voicemails, text messages, Facebook messages, and, um, like calendar alerts, right? So if I have, if I have a flight scheduled for Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. at 2:30 p.m., I'll get a you know my watch will vibrate and be like you have flying today at 3 p.m. as if that's something that I would I would forget. But anyways, um, so but the watch also has a stress meter on it, right? So to measure how stressed out I am at one point, and I've only and I've only used it once in a while. You know, only once in a while I'm like oh what's it reading right now? 
And usually it's read like it doesn't give a number. It has green, yellow, and red. Uh, yellow, you know, green being you know you're not stressed. Yellow being, you know, you might be a little stressed right now. Re- red reading, you know, it, you're really really stressed for some reason. So uh, so yesterday I measured my stress level at one point, and uh, yeah, it tacked out all the way I, as far as it could go. I took a picture of it and sent it to my mate to be like, yeah, here's an idea of how my day's going. Um, I'm not going to get into, I'm not, I wouldn't dare get into all the reasons that I was stressed out yesterday. I wouldn't dare to, knowing who my listeners are on the live video anyways. Um, given, given past practice, if I may, if that's how you want to put it. Um, uh, but, um, but basically yesterday I was trying to get my motorcycle, you know, I wanted to get my motorcycle out yesterday. That's why that was like my big goal for yesterday. I got a wicked late start. I slept in later than I expected to, which even still, I slept in until 9.30, not wicked late. Part of the problem was that I decided to do a sh- to, to take a shower before I did anything else. I just, I was like, I'm going to take a shower real quick. And, you know, for me, a shower is 30 to 45 minutes, depending on, you know, what I do after. Um, you know, not 30 to 45 minutes in the actual shower, just like basically like the in the bathroom time. From the time that it takes to like, Turn the shower on, get nude, uh, you know, get in the shower, do all the stuff that I do in there. Um, Get your minds out of the gutter, okay? I just do normal stuff in the shower. Um, And then, uh, and then, you know, get out of the shower, you know, dress up my beard, you know, dress up my hair. I get a lot of hair to deal with on this head. Moisturize, all that stuff. You know, I get to look good for my mate. Um, You know, she looks good for me. So, you know, I'm I'm dating this fucking beautiful Ferrari. I don't want to be walking around like I'm some fucking beat up 1987 Honda CRX. Um, so anyways, that was part of the problem was, you know, I probably lost an hour doing all of that. And um, so I'm already behind, like I'm driving over to Fremont, already way behind from where I'm supposed to be. And then I get there and, you know, batteries, you know, fucking the motorcycle I knew was going to have a dead battery. That was, you know, that was a given. The only thing was that I didn't ride it much last summer. Um, the part of the, the problem, you know, there, the, the reason why was because I didn't realize that I could just park it right here at, at what is now our place. Um, back last summer, it, you know, we weren't living together and I didn't realize that I could have two vehicles in the parking lot. I thought that I could only have one. So every day it was like, okay, you know, if I, you know, every time that I was in Fremont at what used to be my place, Every time I was there, I would be like, okay, you know, if I leave here with the motorcycle, then I'm stuck riding the motorcycle for the next four days or however long I'm going to be staying in Portsmouth. Um, so I, I rarely ever left Fremont on the motorcycle. Um, so I didn't ride as much last summer as I usually do. And um, so anyways, uh, I probably hadn't ridden it since August or September. I probably hadn't started it since August or September. Excuse me. I go over in November to put it away for the winter. And as I suspected in November, the battery was dead. But all I had to do was take the jumper cables, hook them up to my truck, hook them up to a motorcycle, let it run for about five or ten minutes. And then, uh, and then you know, motorcycle starts right up, no problem. That's what I expected to happen yesterday. So not what ended up happening yesterday. Uh, first of all, there was a Ford Thunderbird in the way of the motorcycle. And that needed... That... That battery was dead too um so me and my father had to you know hook up a toe strap to that and pull that out of the way of the motorcycle and then uh even then you know then we get the motorcycle we push that out of the barn and uh i already know the battery's dead you know that was nothing that was unexpected i get the jumper cables hooked up to the motorcycle and um i let the fucking jumper cable sit on there for probably 45 minutes maybe even an hour uh, nothing. It would turn over, but it was like a slow turnover, and, and it would only turn over once or twice before before it would go to those clicks that you get when you have a dead battery. So, so um, you know, I I let it after that hour. I was like, all right, never mind. You know, on to Plan B. I'm just gonna pull the battery out. I'll uh, I'll go to Batteries Plus and get a new battery. And, and, you know, my biggest problem, you know, the biggest benefit of it, you know, it sucks that I couldn't get the motorcycle yesterday. 
But uh, but you know, at least now I know that it has a dead battery, right? And uh, I pulled the battery out of there, and I called Batteries Plus on my way back to Portsmouth, and and um, and ask, you know, is this still under warranty? And sure enough, it's still under warranty. So get a new battery. You know, I'll, I'll take that battery over to Batteries Plus and just swap it out for a new battery. Um, and then, you know, I don't know when I'll end up back in Fremont to actually pick up the motorcycle. I know that I don't. Cause my original plan was to go over there and use my father's trailer to put the motorcycle on the trailer and then tow the motorcycle to Portsmouth. Uh, but the problem with that plan is that then I get to Portsmouth, I drop the motorcycle off, now I got to drive back to Fremont. So we're talking about two hours of driving here, right? 30 minutes there, 30 minutes back here, 30 minutes back there, 30 minutes back here. We're talking about a minimum of two hours of driving time plus loading and unloading time. Uh, so we're talking, you know, two and a half, three hours out of my day. I've run the math on this. Um, and I just, you know, sometimes, I, most times, there's not a lot that I'm willing to sacrifice that much time out of my day for. There's not a lot of things. Like, the gym is usually, like, in my good health, um, the gym is usually a three-hour portion of my day. In good health, the gym is a three-hour portion of my day. Um, you know, get there at 5 and leave there at, like, 7.45, right? So almost three hours, not even three hours of my day. Uh, work is obviously anywhere from eight to 10 hours, but that doesn't really count as any sort of leisure activity. Like I'm talking about if I have a day off, what am I willing to dedicate time to basically, what am I willing to dedicate time to on a day off? Um, most of my days off, I love to take a nap. That's my, that's one of my favorite things is a nap on a day off, like a midday nap, like a midday, not even a long fuck. Not, I'm not even talking like an hour. Usually, if I take a nap of any sort, it's like 10 to 20 minutes. 20 minutes is on the long side. Uh, my problem is that if I if I go for more than 20 minutes, uh, I might be there for an hour, and and then I'm and then I'm pissed after because you know the rest of the night or the rest of the day, I'm thinking like, ah, fuck. If I hadn't, if only I hadn't lost that 30 minutes, you know, to sleeping. Um, I could have been doing something else, but uh, I guess technically I kind of took a nap today. Here's the thing, right? Let's I'll, I'll give you a little ankle update because uh, I had a follow-up appointment today. Um, probably could have gone better. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Uh, my ankle is uh, – oh, there's my – let's see here. Uh, Rochelle, uh, I love you, mate. Your, your watch is awesome like you. Yes, my, my watch is awesome like you. Um, and, and Jason saying, sup, bro, uh, sup, boo, rather. Jason, all me from Shit Happens When You Party Naked. You know where to find him. Find him on Patreon and go subscribe. It's fucking $3.50 a month for Patreon, okay? For, you know, his show. He is the only show that I consistently subscribe. Here, I'll give you a little cheat code, all right? This is my cheat code when it comes to fucking, uh, you know, podcasters that do any sort of bonus episode or we're only on 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 patreon or anything like this this is my little cheat code because there's two podcasts that i listen to that have some sort of bonus content on patreon and their 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 levels are five dollars a month right but well that doesn't sound like much it's it's really not much but it's five dollars a month what's that translate to 50 50 60 dollars a year 60 dollars a year what I pay in reality is ten dollars a year per show. Ten dollars a year per show. Every six months, I subscribe to their show for the five dollars, and I get the entire backlog. I fucking download all of the backlog of six months of episodes, and then in six months, I'll fucking give them another five bucks. That's what I do. Jason Almy, shit happens when you party naked. It's the only show I consistently give that three fifty two every month. All right, and he deserves it. Okay. Especially with the bullshit he had to put up with to, to you know, forced him into that, into that, you know, ding. Um, but anyways, where was I? I don't fucking remember. Um, that's the problem with checking in on the comments. Um, that's the problem with checking in on the comments is that I always lose my place. Um, fuck. Oh, well. Um, oh yeah, my fucking ankle. That's what I was talking about. My ankle. Um, I, so I had this doctor's follow up today with my ankle. Uh, didn't, 
Uh, my ankle's fucking really swollen right now. Really, really swollen. And I knew it, too. Um, I It looked really good. Today's Friday. I think it was Tuesday night or Wednesday night. I looked at it because I look at it almost every night. And it was either Tuesday or Wednesday night. I looked at it, and I was like, oh, wow, it's looking really good. You know, it's the swelling seems to be really far down. Like, it's not quite at the... Because I compare it against my right ankle, which is my good ankle. And I compare the two. I was like, well, you know, it's not quite there. I mean, it's not that good as my right ankle, but it is looking significantly better than it has been. And then last night, um, I happened to look at it, and I was, you know, when I'm getting ready for bed, I happened to look at it, and I was like, oh, shit, it's, it's pretty swollen right now. And then uh, my mate was in the bathroom getting ready for bed, and I went in there to go brush my teeth, and she looked down, and she goes, wow, your ankle's really swollen right now. And I said, yeah, I noticed. And I kind of had a little bit of a limp about me. Um so, uh, but you know, and, and it kind of hurt, you know, to walk on obviously, and then, um, go to bed, slip fine through the night, uh, with the exception of almost taking my mate's head off with my elbow. Um, but, uh, but other than that, slept fine through the night and then, but I go to work today and I kind of have like a noticeable limp and, um, and then I go to this doctor's appointment for a follow up this afternoon and I take my sock off. I have to get an x-ray before the appointment. I take my sock off, and uh, the girl that did my x-ray was like, wow, you're really swollen. And I said, yeah, I know. I noticed. And she says, uh, "She said, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you had surgery just a couple of days ago. And then after my x-ray, she says, okay, you can put your sock and your shoe back on. I go to put my sock on, and I was like, how the fuck did I get this sock on this morning? Because it, it was hard to get it on. And then I go to the doctor, and uh, and he tells me to take my sock off. And his first thing is, "Wow, that's really swollen." So he checks it. He verif- He was like, "You know, if this was up in your calf or something like that, then I'm, you know, I'd be worried about clotting. I might be sending you for for an ultrasound or something." But you know, it's down. It's way down right at the, you know, right where the ankle is. It's way down there. He said, "I just want you to do a lot more icing and elevating," which is the other thing I haven't been. Um, you know, I haven't been icing and elevating lately because, you know, I have a timeline in my head that my body apparently has a very different timeline. I haven't been icing and elevating. I haven't been uh, taking any aspirin. I haven't been taking any Advil or Tylenol. So now I'm back on my cocktail of fucking 10 pills at a time, which is super fun. Um, trying to take 10 pills all at once. It's, it's a lot of fun. Luckily, I wash it down with alcohol, so... So that's my ankle update. How about a fucking how about a uh, a little documentary sort of kind of update? Uh, a week ago, let's see here. Today's Friday. Had to have been about a week ago because I started watching on Sunday. About a week ago, Roe sends me a text message and says, uh, "Your next documentary should be The Dropout. Um, it's on Hulu." So. So, all right, you know, she suggests something to me. I'm going to follow through with it. I'm going to, I'm going to look it up. Um, so I check out this, uh, this documentary and, um, not a documentary. First of all, it's a drama, dramatized, dramatization of a true story. I guess it's kind of like if you ever saw Waco, excuse me, kind of like if you ever saw Waco on Netflix, um, the most recent one on Hulu was, uh, the thing about Pam, uh, starring Re- Renee Zellwinger. Um, there's been a bunch of these over the past few years, kind of, you know, true stories that have been turned into dramatization, limited series type of thing. Um, so I watched this and, and there's an, it was actually the mo- the show was based on a podcast, which how fucking awesome would that be? I mean, granted this, you know, this podcast, it's called the dropout. And it's from ABC Studios. So, I mean, these people are already making fucking hand over fist anyways. Um, They make a ton of money. Uh, But how fucking cool would it be to be like, I'm going to make a podcast. And then eventually some network is going to pick up that podcast to make a show out of it. Um, The show show on Hulu that I just mentioned, the thing about Pam. Um, There's a true crime show that I listen to, true crime podcast that I listen to called The Generation Y. This is a show that started about seven or eight years ago, and um, and it started with just two friends who wanted to talk true crime. It started because one of those guys did jury duty, 
and he didn't like how jury duty was handled. And so he did, him and his friend did a podcast uh, kind of about his experience at jury duty. And now they just do a true crime podcast where they talk about new cases every week. I think I already said it's called the Generation Y. My problem with it is they, you know, as much as they might say they're like pro law enforcement or something, they are not. They are fucking. They're they're kind of they're they're very Monday morning quarterback. They're they, you know, sometimes they get it right. Sometimes they're like you know. Sometimes you're listening to something and you're like, what the fuck were the police thinking in this? Like I listen to a ton of true crime, and I think like, what the fuck were the police thinking here? Like what? How did this go wrong? Like you know, there's one where. There's one where a woman is in a domestic violence relationship. Her boyfriend's constantly beating the shit out of her. She kicks him out. She does all the things that you're supposed to do. She kicks him out. He's gone. And then he goes to her house one night, and she's on the phone with 911. But because of cutbacks recently in the department, the department was like, well, we can't get out there. And and it's not like this is like, you know, it's not like they're like 500 miles away. It's not like, the, you know, it's not like the, the closest police car is 500 miles away closest police car is probably within 10 miles and they were like you know the dispatch is 911 operator dispatch you know 911 operator transfers this woman to dispatch and uh and she's like you know this this dispatcher is like well yeah sorry uh you know you should uh make sure you lock the door and uh you know best of luck to you is basically how it goes this guy breaks the door down beats the shit out of her and leaves her for dead and then it's not until the next morning when this girl's friend comes over to see her and finds her, you know, bleeding on the ground, beaten to a pulp. And uh, this friend calls the police and the friend is on the phone with the dispatcher like, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? She called the police. She told me that she was calling the police. Why didn't you guys come out here? The dispatcher ends up hanging up on her. And then and then, you know, it's all recorded. And the dispatcher's talking to the chief of police like, oh, yeah, it's this woman again. Can you, uh, you know, just acts like it's an inconvenience. So in those particular cases, all right, the Generation Y can get it right sometimes. But they're, but it's heavily outweighed by the many times that they're like, you know, that they're like, well, I don't understand why the police didn't do this or this or this or this. And it's like, have you ever been a police officer? Shut the fuck up. So anyways, but here's what's cool. Let's get back to what's cool about the Generation Y. They, um, you know, they started a podcast. There's just two guys start a podcast. It releases every Sunday, and you know, me and Ro talked about it and success, podcast success, and and really consistency. And uh, you know, they certainly nail that. They, you know, they have a show topic which is true crime, and they have a consistency every Sunday. Um, you know, so. You know, it can be relied upon versus my show or, or, or Jason Almy's show or a few other people who, you know, who knows when the fuck one's going to drop. Um, but anyways, these guys sat down with Renee Zellweger or however the fuck you say her last name um, in Los Angeles to talk to her about the show, about this, you know, the thing about Pam's show, which is incredible. It's It's really insane. And this is after, I mean, if you know anything about this particular case, it's kind of fucking crazy. Uh, I highly suggest listening to the podcast. It's like a six-part podcast called The Thing About Pam. And it's fucking wild. Uh, Basically, this guy comes home one day, finds his wife dead on the floor, calls 911. 911, you know, and and prosecutors and the police think that his, you know, he sounds over the top when he's on the phone with 911. The reality behind it all, once you listen to everything, is that this woman, Pam, 100% killed this woman, killed other people. <laughs> and, uh, you know, eventually the husband, I mean, the husband got tried and convicted. He eventually got released um, from prison. And, uh, the pro- you know, and that's, you know, that's one of my problems with prosecutors is that they refuse to admit wrong. You know, if there's someone released that's been wrongfully convicted, the prosecutor is like, no, we got the right guy. And they refuse to try someone else, too, even if it's right in their fucking face the way this woman Pam is. Listen to the fucking podcast. I'm telling you right now, for any of my listeners that listen to this show, I played it for I played it for Roe on our way to and from Rangeley once. Um, 
I highly suggest it. I mean, listen to it and 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 come away from that. And please tell me, try to lie to my face and tell me that um, you know the husband killed the wife and that Pam is innocent. So, anyways, I just thought that was really awesome. Those guys uh, doing that. Uh, but anyways, back to the dropout. So the dropout. Um, I almost feel bad for this woman. I'm not going to do it. You know, it's not, there's no spoiler alert here. There's nothing to spoil. All right. You know, the premise of the story is basically this woman, um, she wanted to be to healthcare what Steve Jobs was to technology. That's basically what she wanted to be. She wanted to be a genius. <laughs> Here's where I feel bad for her. her idea actually was kind of good. Her idea was basically uh, you take something the size of a cell phone of your modern day smartphone and you do a prick on your finger and that will give you that will give you the user, not some doctor, that will give you the user a you know a um, you know a blood analysis to tell you like, oh, do you have fucking COVID right now? Do you have AIDS? Do you have uh, some sort of STD? Do you you know do you have cancer? Um, are you pregnant? You know, like all these things that right now, like if I go to the doctors or wherever and I need to have a blood draw and they stick a giant needle in my phone, you know, I, I fucking, I can tell you right now, I fucking, I rarely have blood drawn, um, only in an emergency. Basically it's never like, it's never like, I, I don't go to the red cross ever. I've always used as my excuse that I had the, the, um, the smallpox vaccine and they told us that we couldn't do uh, blood draws anymore or we couldn't donate blood, but I just, I don't, it's not that I'm fucking selfish with my blood. I just don't, uh-uh, no, uh-uh, I'm sorry, okay? There's a lot of things, I'm, I'm an organ donor on my on my driver's license. There's plenty of things where I'm willing to give back to society. Uh, I'm, I'm not giving my blood, and it has nothing to do with selfishness or religiousness or anything like that. I just, uh, I, yeah, no, I fucking hate it. I hate having my blood drawn. I hate having the big fucking needle stuck in my arm. I hate seeing all of my blood come into that little capsule. All of it is fucking awful. It'll make me pass out, I'm sure. So, anyways, this woman's idea was basically a, a finger prick. You know, you you poke your finger the way that diabetics do. It gives you a little drop of blood. She's, you know, her idea was that one drop of blood, um, you could get all of the information that you do off of off of an entire, you know, uh, Venus draw. You know, that's what's called Venus draw. I think that's what's called as a Venus draw. Where they stick that giant needle in your arm, you know, and you have some fucking, you know, some new nurse who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Jason, I need a tiny device that tells me I have ball cancer. Wait, I do. Uh, I use WebMD app. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's right. I use Web, WebMD app when I have a sore throat and it tells me I have ball cancer. No, Jason's right. Yeah, uh, pretty much everything that you type into WebMD is going to be like, you have cancer. You're, you got about a week left in you. Excuse me. Um, but anyways, this woman's idea was actually pretty good. Um, I just think that either the technology wasn't there or she tried to speed it up in a way that she couldn't or the technology was too far ahead. I think, I think that there is someone out there right now, this moment as we speak, I think that there is someone who is going to either listen to this podcast or watch the documentary, you know, watch the little docu series, whatever you want to call it, or watch, you know, hear about her in some way and her idea, and they are going to take it and they're going to run with it and they're going to make it work. Her problem was that she tried to make it all work way too fast. Uh, basically, what happened was that she gets a bunch of investors investing hundreds of millions of dollars at a time. Uh, big, big names, um, you know, Rupert Murdoch, uh, General James Mattis. I'm not even joking. He ended up being on the stand at her trial, uh, testifying against her. Um, uh, George Schultz. I mean, just these huge, huge names in, in politics and medicine. Um, she, was like woman of the year. Uh, she was accepted to the Harvard Board of Medicine. Um, she was in uh, Forbes 30 under 30. She was, you know, she, you know, she, her net worth was listed as like nine billion dollars, and she was 28 years old. Okay, 
Um, I, you know, they, you know, I think that with enough money, you can do anything. You literally, with the right amount of money, you probably can do just about anything. I don't understand where she went wrong because I think other than, other than trying to cheat science, basically, I think is what she was doing. You know, big thing was that she was using, you know, what she ends up doing is she ends up, um, taking these samples that she says can use just a, just a finger prick and get one drop of blood. But then she ends up taking that blood, diluting it with water, putting it into a machine that reads off of like full blood samples. So, you know, just, I mean, uh, it was, you know, not a smart move, but that's the only area that I feel bad for her is that, uh, she had a good idea. I think she, I do think that she had a good idea, just really, really, really bad practice. Um, but, you know, then the other problem is that, like, you get into her trial and, you know, what's she arrested for? You know, what's she on trial for? She's on trial for wire fraud and uh, conspiracy and some other, you know, some other white collar crime type of stuff. Um, you know, she's got a couple things against her. For, well, you know, for her, against her, I don't really know. Um, this is going to sound bad. I'm sorry. You know, sometimes I just speak, you know, without really thinking. Uh I guess for her in the area of for her going to be she's a woman, all right? Um I don't know what my mate would think about this. I I we I don't know if we've ever talked about it or not. But uh the the criminal justice system not historically hard on women. <laughs> if you take if you take um you know a a, a pretty blonde white girl who uh who cheats on her husband, comes home, her husband confronts her about it, they get into an argument, and she stabs him in the fucking heart. That woman is probably going to get 15 to 20 years. All right, Pamela Smart is the exception to this rule. But she's one of the very, very, very few. All right, I listen to a ton of true crime. All right, A ton. And I hear all of these different cases all the time. That woman's probably going to get 15 to 20 years. Uh... If you take a fucking bridge troll who fucking, you know, cheats on her husband, comes home, and then shoots him in the head, you know, she's probably going to get, you know, 50 to 60, 70, maybe even life in prison. Um, you know, if you take a man who who uh, who catches his wife cheating on him and she comes home and he puts a bullet in her head, that guy's getting life in prison. There, no questions asked. They're going to hang him on the front steps of the courthouse, all right? End of story. Uh, if you look historically, I'm not even talking about, I'm not definitely not talking about fucking New Hampshire or New England. All right. We seem to be a different fucking animal when it comes to the judicial system. Because if you, because here's, you know, if you take a drunk driver here in New Hampshire, a drunk driver in New Hampshire that hits a car and kills someone, that guy is probably going to go to jail for four years. All right. You take a drunk driver in Texas, that guy's going to get 20 to 30. All right. And I speak from all of this from experience. Um, you know, it's it, the judicial system around the country is fucking weird. And, you know, I don't know. I have all sorts of thoughts on, you know, on the one hand, I think that every state should just be a fucking state. You know what? You you know, you know, why do we have federal laws? I, I don't I, th- that's one of many things that I don't understand. Why do we have federal laws? Why do we have states that are separated by borders where you can do one thing in one state and it's fine? And, you know, you cross an imaginary line an imaginary line in the sand and uh and all of a sudden whatever you're doing is illegal it doesn't make any sense it's fucking stupid um or the punishments are different you know the punishments vary um you know but then you also have crimes where it's like oh well we're the federal government and we can do and say whatever we want um but anyways back to the dropout um the other thing going in I don't know, for or against this girl. Uh, her name was Elizabeth Holmes, by the way. If you have any inclination to look her up on Wikipedia. Um, she's fucking crazy. I, she's got crazy eyes, for sure. If you look at her face, she straight up has crazy eyes. Uh, you know, they say that uh, jobs that most attract psychopaths are, you know, the number one is CEO. And that's what she was. She was the CEO of this company. And she really, really wanted to be the CEO of that company. 
Um, she's definitely got psycho eyes on her. I don't know if she was going to become a serial killer at all. Probably not. But um, she's definitely got crazy eyes. But anyways, the other thing going for or against, I'm not really sure which one. Um, she was taking money from already rich people. It's not easy when you're in court uh, to to say, um, you know, well, you know, this woman became a billionaire by taking, you know, a million dollars from Walgreens, which is a multi tens of billion dollar company. Um, you know, when you, when you look at numbers like that, it's like, okay, I, you know, and you got a jury of 12 people that probably make anywhere from 40 to $80,000 a year. You got a jury of 12 people that like, how do billionaires and millionaires never end up on jury duty? When was the last time a millionaire was on jury, jury duty, right? That should never, why do they, you know, they always, one of the people on the jury for this fucking woman didn't even, English wasn't her first language. She even told the judge I don't speak English. <laughs> she told the judge, I don't, I don't speak good English. I don't speak good English. I, I can't really understand what's being said. And they allowed her to be on the jury. How does that work? That shouldn't work at all by any means of the imagination. That should never work. How is that possible? You're, you're, you're going to decide the fate of a person. Granted, in this case, it's just a fucking, you know, a fucking psycho who's, who's probably, you know, you know, doesn't need a jury to convict her because she's guilty anyways. Um, but, uh, but, but, you know, what if this woman's on, on jury uh, or on, on trial for murder that she's innocent of, right? What if it's a different case, a completely different case? What if it's someone on trial for a murder they're not guilty of, right? And, and now you have a jury member that doesn't speak English. Okay. That's no one sees a problem with that. <sighs> So, but anyways, it is hard when you're looking at a case and you're like, well, this woman took $125,000 from me. Okay, how much do you have in your bank account? I still have $190 million, but she took $125,000. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry for your fucking loss, but you've probably cheated the country in taxes out of 125 at least. So let's just call it even and have a nice day. Speaking of cheating your taxes, which I would never, ever do, but I did do my own taxes this year. I think I might have missed a couple of, uh, you know, income things based on, like, uh, podcasting stuff. It's like seven or eight bucks here and there. It's no big deal. The reality here is that probably, like, half of America at least did not report certain earnings in some way, shape, or form. And I don't think that's enough. I think the entire country should just straight up not report any earnings. I think my biggest problem with the with with the tax return process is that I get a thing in the mail from the IRS saying, "Here's what you made this year." And then I have to go to the website and I have to enter in the same information that they already have, and that's how I why isn't this just an automated system? What what why do I have to do all this shit? Why isn't this whole thing just automated? Why why isn't and why isn't it adjusted? Why isn't it adjusted throughout the year? Why 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 couldn't it be like by August, by August, the IRS should be able to look at how much you have paid in taxes and be like, "Yeah, you're going to overpay this year. Let's stop charging you taxes on your fucking paycheck." You know, let's let, let's dial that back so that you're not owing any, you know, so that you don't owe and we don't owe. There's no, you know, so that everything is even, right? Wouldn't that make more sense? Shouldn't it all be on automated? This is fucking 2022. What is the problem? Why am I the only one seeing this shit? <sighs> on that note, I'm going to fucking wrap this thing up. I got movies to watch and beer to drink and a mate to wait for to get home because she should be here any minute. I did it. I knocked it out before, um, before she got here. I'm psyched about that. Thank you, Jason, for all of your comments. Caitlyn Jenner was a better woman of the year than Lady Steve Jobs. <laughs> no, uh, not bad. Casey Anthony. Yes, Casey Anthony. Excellent example of what I just said, the the pretty white girl syndrome. It's actually called a – that's actually – I'm not even being, like, racist or sexist. That is what it's called. It's called, It's called like uh, – now i got to look it up. It's called, like, a white woman syndrome – White woman syndrome. Is that what it's called? Uh, yeah, missing white woman syndrome. So this is, yeah, it's a real thing. It's on Wikipedia, so it's got to be real. 
Uh, missing white woman syndrome is a term used by social scientists and media commentators to refer to the media coverage, especially in television, of missing person cases involving young, white, upper middle class women or girls compared to the relative lack of attention towards missing women who are not white. Um, and it's a real thing. I mean, think about how often you see any sort of, you know, missing person. I listened to a fucking podcast called The Vanished about missing people, about mi- missing person cases throughout the entire country. You never hear about any of them. But when the fucking white girl goes missing, there's a woman out in Sacramento. I, I want to say Sacramento, California. It was in California or on the West Coast anyways. About four or five years ago, some fucking white chick goes out for a run one day disappears for three weeks comes back has you know black and blue eyes and the case is never solved and she fucking disappears from the media she comes home i think that you know everyone thinks that it was probably a hoax she probably ran off with some boyfriend or something like that and then before she went back to her husband and kids had him whack her up a little a little bit that's probably what happened but anyways Everyone heard about that case back when it happened. You might not remember it now, but if you look it up, I'm sure that you'll remember it. I'm sure you'll be like, oh, yeah, I do remember that. That happened all the way on the fucking West Coast. All right, I'm in New Hampshire, and I heard about it. I heard about it before she got back. I heard about it while she's missing. While she's missing, I hear about a white woman missing in fucking California. Why? When there are hundreds, if not thousands, of other Men and women missing all over the country who just literally disappeared. They, it, I mean, it's like they stepped into another fucking dimension. You know, it's crazy. All right. End rant about that. For now, for now, all right? I'm probably not actually done with that one. I'm probably going to go off again about it. Who knows? I, you know, I have a tendency to go back through these episodes, listen to them again, make sure everything's coming out good on the, on your end of it. And then I'm like, oh, fuck, I should have mentioned that thing. And I also talk to myself all week long about a hundred different topics that I should be talking about on here. And then I forget. By the time I get down here and sit in front of this fucking microphone, I have forgotten whatever it is that I'm going to talk about. So check out 4hmclothing.com um, and adameve.com and strikeforceenergy.com. All three of those you can use offer code adulting, varying degrees of discounts at all of them. Um, that's going to do it for me. Have a good night.